when you're not getting results in the beginning, it's very easy to say, you know what, does this matter that much? Obviously it doesn't matter because nobody, nobody cares about what I'm doing. I would say that in the beginning. We evolve and so does your why. But you need to, it's interesting, if you want to evolve, you have to know your why, if you at least want to evolve a lot. And then once you evolve, your why evolves as well. And it's a constant iterative process. If your why keeps changing, does that mean you are not aligned in the direction or path you are taking? For example, career or goals? If your why keeps changing, I believe it's because you are now more aware. You are either more self-aware or you are more aware of how the world works. So um, let's say that you want to be an Olympic swimmer and then you find out later what that's really going to take. And then you decide, you know what, this is not fulfilling. The reason you changed directions is because you are now more aware of what it takes and you don't want to actually invest that and maybe swimming isn't as fulfilling as you thought it would be. So Kevin and I, early on, we thought, you know, six figures was going to make us happy and it took us achieving that goal to realize that that was not fulfilling. I think fulfilling is probably the better word. So I think of the why, like the compass um, in Pirates of the Caribbean, where it will always point to whatever your heart desires most, but that can change based on your awareness of the landscape, your, your awareness of yourself. We evolve, and so does your why. But you need to, it's interesting, if you want to evolve, you have to know your why, if you at least want to evolve a lot, and then once you evolve, your why evolves as well, and it's a constant iterative process. Uh, yeah, I would second that. I would say most likely you haven't found you haven't found the most aligned version of it yet. Maybe you haven't found the vehicle to deliver it with. I don't I'm not sure, but yeah, I would second what Alan said. I remember early on, Alan, I I've mentioned this a couple times, but I wanted to long before I knew what being an entrepreneur was, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I was looking into ordering a bunch of cell phone cases from China and then like selling them. I was going to create my own little store. I was going to go into business with somebody doing landscaping for a short time. There was a lot of things that I wanted to do, but my I don't think I had a why. That's why I kept jumping from one thing to another. I think my goal was to be an entrepreneur, be my own boss, whatever it was, but I didn't have something truly deep, deeply meaningful to me. So I would say, is the thing are, are the things that you keep jumping from actually truly deeply meaningful to you, or is it just sometimes you're just trying different stuff? Maybe that's, maybe that's your current season of life is I'm going to try a bunch of different things and see what lands. And then maybe I can tap into my why power through experience. What do you do if the people around you are not supportive of your why? Uh, yeah. So go ahead, Kev. I, I was just going to say, we learned a framework at, a, at an event we went to called the Vulnerable Problem Solver. And that's always where I go when you need to express truth. I think you have to... The, the Vulnerable Problem Solver is something along the lines of this. So say Alan didn't understand my why. Alan definitely understands my why, which I'm very grateful for. But something along the lines of, Alan, this mission, this purpose, this, this journey that I'm on is so, so very important to me. And here's a list of the reasons why. Right? I grew up in a, a broken home. There wasn't a lot of self-improvement, whatever it may be. Right, There was a lot of ego, whatever it may be. And a fear that I have is that if you don't support me in this or you don't understand why I'm doing it or you don't at least allow me to live my purpose, I feel like this friendship and this relationship probably isn't going to work long term. And that's a fear I have. I don't want you out of my life. I really want to live my life in alignment with my why power and I really would appreciate your support. I think that's a great place to start. At least it opens up a dialogue and then you can at least make accurate decisions based on the truth. So I would say be a vulnerable problem solver. If it's a relationship you really want and you're not getting support from, you have to tell the truth and let people know how it makes you feel. Well said, brother. I, uh, I don't think I was very good at this. Uh, I still struggle with it. On the team, we have something called meat and veggies we're using, where uh, every single time I see a team member, I try to give them uh, one sincere appreciation and then one uncomfortable truth. I see Alan I would a lot. I yeah. see Alan in too many meetings every week. It's, it's a real <laughs> shame for me. <laughs> it's been a few things. Uh, but what I would say is, so Emilia 
and I were about to get on a relationship talks coaching call last weekend. So Saturday. And she had said, I have to be off. I have a meeting at 11. And I was like, okay. And what we found out later is that she wanted to prepare for her meeting at 11.15. And she realized that she had unintentionally um, not been fully truthful about when her meeting started because she didn't really believe that I would honor that that boundary. And I struggle with time. Anyone on the NLU team knows that I have a hard time. I get into flow and I, I'm, I have trouble, obviously. That's why Kevin said, Alan, you have 37 seconds. So... We had this moment where it was like, okay, well, I understand why you did that. I'm sorry that you don't trust that I would honor that. And she went back and did her uh, reflection on it. And she's like, oh my God. And she realized this framework, this really powerful framework was sort of born. And she calls it the the primary, the secondary, and the third truth. I use tertiary. I like the word tertiary for some reason. Tertiary. So primary, secondary, and tertiary truth. Yeah. And you know the framework that I use where it's like you have who you really are, you have who you want to believe you are, and then you have who you want others to believe you are? It's kind of like that. And so she didn't mean to fib or anything like that. This was totally unconscious. So no no shame or blame or guilt on, on her whatsoever. We all do this sometimes. And she's like, oh, I realized that was my secondary truth. So to answer the original question is I think that what we try to do is give like a... a a secondary or a, or a tertiary truth because it's so uncomfortable to give the full truth either to ourselves or to others. So if someone doesn't understand your why, you're probably afraid to tell them the real reasons why you're doing what you're doing, which is something you should check in on. Are you embarrassed about the why? Are you um, are scared they won't be your friend or they won't be with you or whatever it is? Are you afraid you'll outgrow them? Are you afraid they'll outgrow you? You know, what is the, what is the, reason why you're having trouble expressing your full authentic truth. Many people feel passionate about their why, but find it hard to articulate. How can they really cement their why so it becomes foundational going forward? My goodness. Strong work on these questions. Go ahead. Can I get it one more time? Yeah. Many people feel passionate about their why, but find it hard to articulate. How can they really cement their why so it becomes foundational going forward? Mm. Uh, we did it with Kevin earlier. So he created a purpose statement. Kev, can you snag that and share it? Would you be willing to share it? Snag it? Yeah, it's yeah. up here in my squash. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, we just, I didn't know if you had it memorized or not yet. Oh, yeah, we okay. kinda... I'm, I'll say it. You want me to say it? Yeah, please. Yeah, my purpose is to become the most extraordinary version of Kevin possible, but to never forget what it was like not to be. Okay, so at the beginning, what was it? To have deep conversations. <laughs> <laughs> my purpose is to have deep conversations with deep people. That was pretty much it in the beginning. I would say, uh, to answer the question... Hey everyone, I'm Helen Baker from Melbourne, Australia. I'm an entrepreneur and a client of Alan's from Next Level University. I've had many business coaches in the past and I can honestly say that Alan is seriously next level and excuse the pun, but he has this unique ability to help you find a solution to your business problems uh, using his intellect and his business modeling and his genuine heartfelt desire to help you achieve your goals. I can be vulnerable with Alan, I can share anything and feel comfortable in his presence knowing that at the end of our coaching sessions I feel empowered to do incredible things so if you're looking for a business coach, I highly recommend Alan because his advice and his ability to coach you will be instrumental in achieving your success. You can only communicate to yourself as effectively as you've learned how to communicate effectively. And so it needs to be something that you allow to evolve and it needs to be something that you consistently work on. Uh, 
as you learn yourself, you should try to communicate it to yourself. And then this is one thing and I'll share this briefly. I just created a co-created with Kev, uh, a framework called the 25, uh, impact points of effective communication. I was on the phone with a client and he's trying to pitch to investors coming up soon at pharmaceutical investors. And he was asking me how I communicate so effectively. I'm grateful he feels that way because sometimes I wonder. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we came up with, I think, 13 or 14. And then I talked to Emilia and we came up to with like four more. And then Kev, you came up with a couple. Communication is like one of the most difficult things on the planet. It's so difficult. Even think about this. Let's say hypothetically that I say the word polar bear and some people don't know what that means. I know everyone knows what a polar bear is, but let's say they didn't. Now, all of a sudden, I can only communicate effectively with certain people. So if I say also warp, no one knows what that means because it's not a thing. I just made it up. <laughs> I just made it up. So now we, we can't effectively communicate. What people don't always understand is we're communicating with ourselves all the time. That's what thinking is. Thinking is just conversations in our own head. Oh, well, why is ZOA better for caffeine than, than bang? Okay, well, it's only 160 milligrams and it's from green tea extract. So I don't have as much of a crash. It's like a healthier caffeine. Oh, okay. Well, why is that important? Well, I kept crashing after drinking bang. So thinking is just asking and answering questions with self. So to answer the original question, you're not going to be able to communicate your why to yourself unless you understand your why. And unless you're really getting better at communication. Um, and so work on the communication piece in tandem to understanding yourself. And I think that you'll find a lot more clarity. I would say you gotta, you gotta make it part of your identity. I really think the people who they are their purpose, they show up as their purpose. I really believe those are the people who it locks in and they make the most progress. So I would say start living as if your purpose is part of your identity. I know it's not that simple, but when you start taking behaviors that are in alignment with your identity or with, with your purpose and your why, you start saying yes to things that are in alignment. You start saying no to things that are outside of alignment. That becomes who you are. And that's the reason I think Jonan asked why that was my, my, my purpose. I realize that so many people in the self-improvement industry specifically, eventually they get to the point where they forget what it was like to start out. And they give advice based on where they are, not where they started. And unfortunately, nobody starts where they are. Most people start where they start. So in order to help as many people as humanly possible, I'm trying to, and Alan can vouch for this, I'm trying to be the most relatable version of myself. I don't want to be, um, I don't want it to seem like what I have accomplished is out of the realm of possibility for people. Because I realize it won't be able to help them as much. But that's part of my identity, right? That's how I live my life. I want to be, the best I can be, but never forget what it was like to, to be struggling in the beginning. Fire. Thanks, man. With your experience as coaches, what is the strongest why bleeder? Family, occupation, distractions, or other? My goodness. Failure. I think I think for many, many people, especially in the beginning, it's it's failure. And this is why it's so important to be attached to it. Because when you're not getting results in the beginning, it's very easy to say, you know what, does this matter that much? Obviously, it doesn't matter because nobody nobody cares about what I'm doing. I would say that in the beginning. Failure, roadblocks, resistance, I think those are the biggest things. And that's from my experience as well as people I've talked to. Uh, this is what I believe to be the biggest thing holding all human beings back. And that's a bold, bold, bold statement. Going back to that framework of picture a target. So picture the brand target. You know how it's like red and it's got the circles. So the inner circle is who you really are. The next circle or layer is who you want to believe you are. And then the third one is who you want others to believe you are. If you're making decisions based on that third circle, that's the biggest why bleeder. You're going to constantly sabotage. You're going to constantly not be yourself. You're going to be deeply unfulfilled. I've been there. I did that. And that's why when Kevin and I talk on this podcast, we often keep talking about the story of him having suicidal ideation and my car accident because that's when those other circles never mattered anymore. When you have a life or death situation or the death of a family member or death of a pet, 
when you face mortality, you get back to that inner circle, which is your true why. The large majority of our decision-making paradigm is predicated on what other people will think of it. I'm wearing this shirt because I think it'll make me look like a business coach and I'm more likely to get... I mean, what are the reasons? Why am I wearing this shirt? Is it because I love it? Why is this backdrop the way it is? Why am I saying what I'm saying right now? I think that... I have a sign hanging in my bathroom that says, who you are and what you do when no one's watching is what matters most. Period. Period. Because that's who you really are. I try to make my decisions as much as possible, more percentage, more percentage, more percentage, based on who I really am and who I really want to be. Not based on what society thinks about it or what my parents think about it or my relatives think about it or what our community thinks about it. I'm trying to be what I really want. And I know as a kid, it wasn't that way. When I was younger in high school, I wanted significance and I wanted to be, you know, attractive like the athletes and I wanted to be significant and sought after and I wanted to be smarter or better than and stuff like that. None of that really matters. So the biggest why bleeder is the whys that come from ego rather than from truth. The whys that come from what your parents want for you more than what you want for you. That's the biggest why bleeder. If you are, if you are taking actions and not taking actions out of the fear of what others will think, which by the way, that's everyone to a certain extent, some more than others, it's a spectrum, then you, that's the biggest why bleeder. You'll never win at that game. Even if you win, it's not a win. Trust me. Strong work. Next level nation. Imagine this, you and nine other people who are super focused on growth they're dream chasers, and they want to get to the next level of their lives. Every other week with Alan, myself, behind the scenes, peak performance tracking. We have a workbook. There's a WhatsApp group. Next level group coaching. Round number eight starts October 4th. We would love to have you. I think we already have, I don't know, three or four spots filled, but we are taking 10, and once 10 hits, that is it. We will not take any more, so we would love to have you there. If you have been waiting, now is the time. And uh, you can celebrate Halloween with Jeff and Jeff. I'll dress up as something if we do a call on Halloween. (laughs) Sounds good. Uh, I just created a new framework. It's called Quantum Goal Setting. And Kevin and I just fleshed out some stuff before this. And it's got seven layers. And the first one's character. The second one is your inner circle. Then you've got mastery goals, which is what skills you need to develop. And essentially what I've figured out from coaching so many different people, different backgrounds, different cultures, different countries, is that one of the reasons we're not achieving the results we want is because we don't understand that the other goals underneath it. So imagine you want a results goal, but you don't have any character goals that align with it. You don't have any inner circle goals that align with it. You don't have any mentor goals that align with it. You don't have any process goals or contribution goals or mastery goals that align with it. We want these results out here, but we don't understand the depths and the layers required in order to achieve those things. And so if you do want help with that and you're curious about that framework, maybe you have results goals, but you don't have the other goals that align with it, jump on the phone with me. Brandon put a link in the comments and uh, Ron will put a link in the show notes and uh, it'll be a free 30 minute session. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm just going to help you achieve your goals. Your ability to remember things right after you, you, every time we come on here, Alan tries to remember something that he hasn't remembered yet, and he always remembers it pretty well. So I'm always impressed by that. It's, it's genuinely impressive. Thank you, brother. You're very welcome. Next, Level Nation, as always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. B, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you very much. As always, at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out. Say bye, B. Later. Later.